Hi, welcome to the latest in the series, uh, video series on Irish ancestors. This one is going to be on a short video about a neglected source, a source that I didn't realize um, had improved greatly over the past, the past four or five years. So um, let's jump straight in. I'm going to use the, the site as a jumping off point as, as usual. So okay, here we are at the site. Okay, I'll come back to what you just saw there in a second. Um, what I'm going to talk about are estate records, online estate records. So um, going into the cavern, this is part of the free browse section. So you, you, you don't have to be a subscriber to, to dig into this estate records. And you can see what I've, what I've done here is I listed them alphabetically by landlord and then um, chronologically after that. And given that they, most of them are offline, you can see these are, are references. But this one here is online. Okay. Maps and surveys of the Clements estate in Kildam Sheridan. What happened is that a user emailed me and pointed out that she'd found this. I'm not going to mention her name, full name, because I haven't told her I'm going to be mentioning her here. So thank you, Donna, anyway. Um, let me just show you what happens when I click on the link. The Clements estate, County Cavan. 1774 to 1844. You can see that there's uh, one volume of maps, 35 manuscript maps with seven other items, including written surveys. Let's full screen that. And I'll just show you what, what it involves. So you have lists of individuals, you have accounts, most wonderfully, and the reason I think it's online, you have maps. So Edward Wright's holding, Killen Crean, George Higginbottom's holding, you have John Barclays, John Smith's, Robert Lettermore, um, William McAdam, Alexander Farker, John James Carragher. Okay, wonderful stuff. The, okay, the, and it goes on, this page after page after page of it. So I thought wonderful. And I did what you've just seen. I added it in. It's, it's for the, the parish of Kildrum Sheridan in Cavan. Um, and then it occurred to me, well, this is not the only one that's online. And this search screen looks a little different to what I remembered it to be. So let's just try uh, an experiment, a state, search digitized content only and find. This is the National Library catalog, catalog.nli.ie, by the way, I'm not sure I mentioned that, but you can see there are 1,805 results here. Okay, that's pretty significant. And you get one of the things they've done, I think, very well. This is a, a, a slow, patient accretion of functions onto the catalog site. It's now the main route of access to digitized records other than the parish records. So um, if you look, you can you can frame your, your parameters for the query, all sorts of interesting ways. So from, let's see, let's make it the, the heyday of the estate papers would be from, say, 1700. They're about to about 1850 because after that you have, well, let's say 1868 and set. And that brings it down to 1,443. You get a, a complete list of what they are, of um, the subject, of who created them, um, of the language, the genre. You also get one of the things they've, they've added into this, this search page is results from sources.nli.ie. These are the old Hayes manuscript catalogs and Hayes periodical catalogs um, to do with anything to do with Ireland really up to the 1980s. And so you have, these aren't digit digitized only, but they're there. So you have this wonderful, um, a, a, a page after my own heart with, with lots and lots and lots of rabbit holes that you can go down. Okay, the one thing about this estate, so you can say estate, Mayo, say pick a county and so everything digitized for the estates in Mayo and you can see you have the rent ledger, ledger of the ultimate estates in County Mayo 1840 to 1844 um, again let's full screen it and go through it if you have an ancestor who was a tenant on one of these you can see it's done alphabetically by townland you get detailed um, rental accounts um, years due, who's paid what, how much they are. Wonderful stuff, absolutely gorgeous. Um, but unfortunately, the main thing that comes up when you search on these is not 
tenants list like that, most of them are maps. By far, the majority are maps. Um, and the majority of those are um, this man here, John Longfield. So if we take out uh, Mayo and go back to estate, you can see the maps, 1,024 of the 1,443 are maps. And what they are, the vast majority of those, John Longfield, 185 um, are John Longfield. This is the single biggest collection. These, the, the Longfield estates were, or the Longfield maps were created by this surveying company in Dublin that flourished between 1770 and um, 1840 and uh, specialised in doing maps for uh, large estate owners. Maps including tenants' names, maps showing boundaries, maps showing townland names, so all sorts of wonderful things in it. Why are they online here? Um, I think this is me speculating, um, but I think what happened is that the maps are much more fragile than manuscripts bound in volumes and so on. So the, there's a very large conservation project to uh, preserve the maps. And as part of the con conservation, everything that needed to be conserved was then digitized as well. So they're not transcribed. Most of them at least are not transcribed, um, but they are here online and they are very well described. So for example, um, the map of estates in the county of Kilkenny, 1847. Um, if you come down here, you get um, leather band. Okay, one of the things that says, get this, as a digital copy of this item is available, the original will not be issued. So, I mean, it's a, it's a, a very obvious conservation um, uh, tactic to make sure that the, you have a good digital copy so you, people aren't pawing the original. Okay, um, the, the, the Longfield Estates, um, I have, the, there are a couple of problems about them the Langfield collections. Um, let's just go into them. Um, first of all, a lot of them are not very well dated. Um, they are dated only when they, the, um, the examples I've picked, as it so happens, are, are very well dated. But the majority of them are simply between 1770 and 1840. They're the only dates. There's no date on the map. Um, uh, they're wonderful. There are wonderful things on them on some of these maps. This is what I, I showed you at the very beginning. Um, this is a map of um, a townland in the, the parish of Castle, Castletown Ara in, in Tipperary. And let me let me full screen it for you and show you what's what's wonderful about it. This is Townlock, the parish, and this is Town, Townlock Mountain. And this here, okay, one of the things, these are really well digitized. And it says here, near this lies buried one of the kings of Leinster who was killed by the son of Brian Baru, king of Munster. The place is called Barnavakingi. Okay, isn't that pretty spectacular to find um, on your on your estate map? So that there are all sorts of things in the maps. Um, there are all sorts of uh, one of the other neglected sources that I've, I've been talking about are the um, the Beetham will abstracts and they're part of this digitization um, genealogy genealogical and digitized the genealogical office um, let's just see ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. what are we doing we're looking for uh, gene genealogical ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. there we go um, digitized and find there we are prerogative wills okay so again these are volumes that were fragile that were in need of conservation as part of the conservation process they were digitized so they, it, there's a certain randomness about what gets digitized and what doesn't um the longfield collection for example there are over 1600 maps and there are about 900 of them digitized this has been going on in that there, there is no great fanfare by the library about this. I didn't know about, about this. Um, I'm working my way through them slowly now and adding them to the references on the site. Um, but this is a slow process of everyday work, part of the, 
the, the work of the library and it's producing something wonderful, I think. And I think that the, the interface, the catalog interface um, it has improved in leaps and bounds. You can set dates, you can set types of manuscripts, you can um, play around with the, um, the search. You search all fields or you can search the author or you can search the call number. So um, it's wonderful. Um, and if you simply search for um, the Longfield collection, um, you get a, 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 let me just see Longfield, Longfield, and we'll take, a, take away the current Longfield, uh, Longfield collection, there you are, the Longfield collection. Um, that you, you can see there are, there are 955 digitized and 628 non-digitized. Um, and you, there, there's a long, if you Google the, the Longfield collection, you get taken to another part of the, the National Library site that will give you the details of the, the family and how the, the maps came into the possession of the library and so on and so forth. But the, the, the real thing I just wanted to do was to point out that this is not simply a, a library catalog anymore. This is much more. This is a digital research resource um, and you, um, away you go. The, the ways you can use it are limited only by your imagination. So enjoy. <laughs>